blurred out the contact information and the names because I don't want you guys ordering stuff from these people. And I'll explain why right here. I've got my cursor supersized here so you can see where I'm going, where I'm pointing to, and some other things have got pulled up here. So this first one, <laughs> a stunning set of three increasingly rare coins minted over 100 years ago. This is the kind of common coin fodder you'll see in these magazine ads. So we'll start with the Liberty Nickel, or the V Nickel. Minted from 1883 to 1912, so yeah, that qualifies for being minted over 100 years ago. Up here, guaranteed to be in good or better condition. That's pretty vague, because good is on the very low side of the coin grading scale. Or better leaves room for a little bit of improvement, but uh, it's not going to make much of a difference here in the end, and I'll show you why. Right here. Manufacturer's suggested retail price, 50 bucks, but not, not, not from these people. The member's price of the group is $29.99. So 30 bucks for three coins, just average it out, 10 bucks per coin. Now there is a little value here with this holder. It appears you get this rare coin plaque holder kind of thing. Probably suitable for framing. That's probably in here somewhere. But let's just say 10 bucks per coin. So the Liberty Nickel. And here I've pulled up a website, coinstudy.com. That's their kind of my go-to place for just down and dirty, rough and quick coin estimates. <clears throat> so, Liberty Nickels. Now, what you'll see here is the further back you go, like most coins, the prices go up. Because they're older, they were in circulation longer, they're more beat up, they're scarcer, more of them have been lost. So, generally speaking with coins, the further back in history you go, the more you should expect to pay. And I guarantee that at 10 bucks a coin, you're not going to get an 1885 or an 1886 or even in 1887, for that matter, because those are rare and expensive coins, even in good condition, like this ad is promoting. Uh, I also don't think you're going to get an 1883 no sense, because that's five bucks. they got to leave room for a healthy profit here. You're going to get a low-grade, later date from that series coin, because they want to get these coins as cheap as possible so they can mark them up for as much as they can to make as much money because capitalism. So let's just assume you're going to get one of the later coins from the series. This looks more like what you're going to get. Say from 1899 or 1900 on, look at these, prices for a good coin, $1.60, $1.50, $1.30, $1.40. These are going to be one of the coins you're going to get in this ad over here. An early 1900s coin, which, which is still cool, but not for 10 bucks. You can go to a coin shop and get one of these same years in really good grade, somewhere around fine, extremely fine for 10 bucks. So why would you settle for a good example where you can get something a lot better looking and, and worth more for the same money? basically. So, the V-Nickel over here, valued at $10, roughly, in this package, you could buy one for a buck and a half. I just saved you $8.50. Let's move on to the Barber Dime. And this one does get shockingly specific. Barber Dime and Barber Quarter that were last minted in 1916. Uh, oh, my mistake. I thought they said you were going to get a 1916 Barber Dime or Quarter. I was wrong. But the same rule applies. You're probably going to get one from the later years. Because going back to the early years, and of course there are some back here that are five bucks, and there's another five bucks. Mostly the Philadelphia issued coins. The uh, New Orleans and San Francisco 
rarer by comparison by far. It's a lot less minted for those coins. So in theory, if you're spending $10 on this one coin, average condition for this ad, you could get an 1892. Highly unlikely, though. They're going to stick you with a common date, most likely from the later part of the series. And here's probably what you're going to get. And this ad right here, if you look, I'll, probably, I'll try to blow this up a little bit. I did notice on this ad right here, they put an S mint mark dime in their photo right here. And in the quarter, it's a D mint mark. Generally speaking, you're probably not going to get mint mark coins because they're worth more. Philadelphia struck a whole lot more coins than Denver or San Francisco, or any other mint for that matter, throughout history. So chances are you're not going to get a minted, a mint marked coin. But looking through these coin values here, it's entirely a possibility with the Barber Dime. 1911S from San Francisco, two bucks. The Philadelphia version from 12 is two bucks. In fact, PDS from 1912, they're all two bucks a piece. There's a fairly good chance you might get a mint marked Barber Dime from this ad. You never know. But then again, why take the chance? Because spending 10 bucks per coin on average from that ad, and you can buy one a date of your choice for two bucks, three bucks. Or go for one in really good condition and pay five, six, seven bucks for it. Of course, you're not going to get one in extremely fine condition for the 1913S. That's $184. And that comes into condition rarity. And we've talked about that in other episodes. Or a coin could be very common and very low dollar in the lower grades, but you get up to the higher examples and the price just skyrockets. So... We'll talk about that more later. So your chances of getting a Barber Dime with a mint mark on it are pretty good, but you're going to overpay for it. So let's say two bucks for the Barber Dime. So we've got a buck and a half for the Liberty Nickel, two bucks for the Barber Dime. I'm going to write this down so I can keep track of how much you're getting screwed here. Now let's go on to the Barber Quarter. Again, you're going, to get a, you're going to get a common date, possibly no mint mark. I'm not sure on the values for mint marked barber quarters, but looking over this list here, oh, San Francisco, 1913, again, 1913S, and San Francisco minted coins are extremely rare, apparently. All right, so we're going to get something later in the years. So five bucks. To get you a 1916 or 1916D. San Francisco again, quite a bit higher. But Philadelphia and Denver through these years are all about five bucks. And going all the way back to, again, the early 1900s, at least. And then prices start going up a little bit back 18, 1899 and, and earlier. So in general, from 1900 forward, Five bucks will get you a Philadelphia or a Denver minted barber quarter. But again, you're paying $10 per coin over here. Let's write down five bucks for the barber quarter. So my grand total is $8.50. Now, $8.50 gets you all three of those coins in good or better condition. And dates of your choice. The price over here is twenty nine ninety nine. So we just saved you twenty one dollars and fifty cents. Twenty one dollars and fifty cents. This package over here is not worth twenty bucks. So you're saving twenty bucks. You get to pick three of your own dated coins. Maybe your grandfather or great grandfather was born in, in this era, as mine was. And you could pick his birth year and get three of these coins in your grandfather's or great-grandfather's birth year for $8.50. That's the start of a family heirloom coin collection. This is the start 
down the road of being disappointed and overcharged for coins. Don't take these these ads in catalogs, magazines, the weird weekly news magazines you see and um, checkouts of supermarkets. There's coins ads in there. Run, run away. Okay, I've got lots more examples of this. Let's just pull up the next one at random. Okay, here we go. 90% silver walking Liberty coin set. Buy it today. In five years, you'll be glad you did. No, you won't. We just proved that with math here, so no. <laughs> but uh, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Now, one thing I do enjoy about this ad a little bit is they threw some history over here. They talk about the Walking Liberty half being 90% silver, uh, the World War One, the World War Two era when it was minted, the, the designer of it. Pretty cool. So they give you a little bit of a history lesson through here, but it's, it's basic Wikipedia history. You can look on the internet and get a lot more information on the Walking Liberty half than what you see in this ad. But I thought it was a nice touch. A little extra salesman's panache on this. Okay, let's let's get into uh, debunking the value of these coins. A set of six Walking Liberty half dollars. Uh, there is no specific listing for years on this. So we're just going to do average coin, average condition, common year. So going back to coin study, which is my go-to half dollars, every walking half dollars. All right, we're going to go to the 1930s because generally speaking from the 30s forward, a lot more coins were minted. And let's see here. Now, this is collector value. There's a few more things we should talk about when it comes to silver coins. One is collector value versus spot or silver value. Let's, let's cover collector value first. Okay, over here in this ad, you get six coins for $89.99. So that's $15 per coin on this ad. And if you went shopping to your local coin store or an online auction site where you could maybe snipe a better deal than this, you're going to pay seven bucks or so because you're going to get a common date coin and it's seven dollars a piece from let's say 1927 all the way to the conclusion of the series in 1947. So you're going to get a Philadelphia, Denver, or a San Francisco minted coin in any of those 20 year spans and you're going to get six of them. And you're going to pay $15 a piece for them, and they're going to be worth $7 a piece. So, not a bargain. So, even though they included a little bit of a salesman's panache here in the history of the coins, and again, I love this line, in five years, you'll be glad you bought these. No, you won't. You'll, you're going to be ripped off in, in five days after you get them when you research what these are worth. We'll go to the next one here. Okay, here we go. This is one of the all-time favorite American coins, the Buffalo Nickel. And you get a bag of 20 of them for $26.99. So just over a buck 30 a coin. That sounds like it might be a good deal, actually. Let's uh, investigate it. Now, these are going to be in very good or better condition. So, the number to hit here, let's just say, is a buck and a half. Round up a little. A buck and a half per coin. And you're going to get 20 of them. So, let's go down the list here. And here's the good category. This says very good or better. So, we're going to have to at least for the purposes of this this series here approximate the very good price between the good and fine it'll be somewhere in the middle 
So again, we're going down to the later years, and here here's some some prospects: 1923, a buck 34 in good, 340 in fine. So the middle ground would be somewhere around two bucks. But you're buying them over here for a buck and a half, basically. So that's probably not a, not going to happen. They want to get these coins as cheap as they can, and here we go. Starting in 1927, 39 cents for a good condition coin. Now, here's the thing. If you buy in bulk, you might pay good price of 39 cents a piece or cheaper, but the coins might grade in very good, fine, for really common dates, maybe even very fine or extremely fine, but you're paying the good price because the good condition price because you're buying in bulk. And that's what these companies do. They find the the biggest lot of coins they can get, and they hammer the price down and get them as cheap as they can get so then they can offer these prices in the catalogs. And keep in mind, a very good condition Buffalo Nickel is still not pretty. These things have very fine details, very high relief, in the design that wore away quickly. Basically, a good coin will still have the date, but it's worn down very, very hard. So anyway, you're going to get, there you go, 1934 or 39 cents. You're going to get something in the mid-20s to late 30s. And they're going to be worth 50 cents a piece. 40 or 50 cents a piece. And you're paying a buck and a half over here. That's three times the value. So to get 20 of these, again, in, in years you pick. And you can pick a Philadelphia or a Denver or a San Francisco in the case of the 1935 and 1936. You can pick your own year and pick your own mint mark for a third of the price of this random grab bag of common Buffalo nickels that you're paying three times too much for. So, again... Look like it might be a good deal if you don't know your coins too much, but it's really not. Oh, this one is going to be fun. And this ad, I think, probably trips up a lot of people because they had no idea that the United States Mint struck a two cent or a three cent piece. Now, surely. These have got to be really rare, right? I've never even seen a two-cent piece or a three-cent piece. And here's my chance to buy them both together for only sixty-two ninety-five. That's got to be a good deal, right? Let's check it out. Now, this is important. This ad does not say anything about condition. It comes with a certificate of authenticity, though. And the Matthew Mint uh, took pictures of what appeared to be very mint state, or maybe even proof coins. These photographs are showing high dollar collectible coins that you are not going to get when you send away for this. So, let's see. Two cent piece. And again, even for sixty two ninety five, you might get a three dollar coin here shoved into this holder. Let's see. Well, I was close. $10. $11. And you're definitely going to get a good condition coin because up in fine condition, we're talking 20 bucks, 40 bucks a piece. So you're definitely going to get a good condition coin on a two cent piece. It's not going to look like this at all. So you could get Pretty much any of these coins, except an 1864 small model, that's 142 bucks. You're not going to get the 1872, which is $277. So you're going to get one of these middle year coins in good condition. You're going to pay $32 for it in this set. The average price divided by two. You're going to pay $32 for it, and it's going to be worth 10 or 12 or 13 bucks. Strike. The three cent piece. And this is the set here. And again, you're going to get something that's worth 10 or 12 or 13 bucks in good condition. You're not going to get anything on this part 
1882 on, all rare. Not, no values even stamped here. They all just say rare. So again, you're paying $32 for each of these coins, and they're going to be worth $12 a piece. I will say the uh, little coin encapsulation holder they have here is nice. And uh, the box, the black velvet box they put it in is nice. But it's not worth 40 bucks because that's what you're overpaying to get these coins. Okay, here we go. And this will allow us to bring up uh, a conversation on silver spot price. This is the Morgan dollar. Sort of. I did want to have a talk about silver value and bullion value, spot value, however you want to say it, all the same thing. Uh, we'll do that after this. This is probably the worst ad in that magazine. Of all of them, this is the worst. What you think you're getting is a Morgan silver dollar. Not just one, but five. Five of the rarest Morgans in BU, which is brilliant uncirculated condition, honored in this five-piece set. And you look over here, $26.99. So you think you're getting five of the rarest Morgan dollars in brilliant uncirculated condition for $27. That is the furthest from the truth. And it, they double down on it, because up here in bold print, you get an 1889 Carson City, the rarest Carson City Morgan. An 1893 S, the rarest San Francisco issue. 1884 and 1892 S coins, and the rarest Morgan of them all, the 1895 Morgan. With a presentation case. A lot of people are going to fall for this, and what they're getting is junk. These are reproductions that might not even be plated in silver, let alone real silver. They are not real silver. And if you look real close, right here, this is stamped copy. C-O-P-Y. Copy. It is a federal law that replicas must be stamped as copies, replica, facsimile, something, to prevent these from being sold to people as the genuine thing. And if you read a little bit further down in the ad, this limited edition tribute set bears the dates and mint marks of the rarest and most expensive key date Morgans. The, the originals are worth over $1 million. So there you go. It's saying the originals are worth a million. You're going to pay 27 bucks. You should know right off the bat these are not the originals. But some people are still fooled. Then it says, mirror images of the originals. These silver-clad proofs come in brilliant, uncirculated condition. Okay, so the normal person at this point should very well be clued in that these are copies. The picture has the copy stamp on it. It says these are tributes, and the originals are worth a million dollars, and these are mirror images of the originals. But I guarantee some people are still fooled, and that's where it comes in. You, you have to read what you're getting yourself into. You have to know what you're buying. You have to be educated a little bit before you spend your money. But for a coin collector looking at an ad like this, like I said earlier, it's infuriating. Nothing makes me as mad in the coin hobby as replicas being represented as the real thing. Or people who know they have a replica or a copy or a fake or a counterfeit representing it is the real thing. That's the one thing that makes me even more furious. But getting back to this. As a coin collector, this is almost humorous. Because these are spectacular silver-clad proofs in brilliant uncirculated condition. Okay, brilliant uncirculated generally means... It's a mint state coin, and it was produced for commerce, and it was never put in commerce and never circulated. A proof coin was never meant to be put in circulation, and it's a different die and a different striking process. So proofs and 
business strikes or commerce strikes are, are two separate things in two separate hands, never that the twain shall meet. So to have the proof condition alongside a brilliant uncirculated condition in the same ad, it just it reeks of uh, salesmanship by a person who's not a real coin collector. Us coin collectors find humor in strange things. So these are no value coins. Now you might think to yourself, well, they do say silver proofs. They say silver clad proofs. What clad means is that the, the inside of the coin is probably copper or tin or aluminum or any number of other non-precious metals. And it's just been layered on top with silver. You might think, well, how much silver? It might be worth it. No. A few of the other ads of coins like this, if I recall correctly, they actually put in the fine print that there was five milligrams of silver in the plating of the coin. Now, silver is currently at $16.56 an ounce as of this taping. It's 53 cents per gram for silver. And a milligram or a microgram there are one million of them in a gram. So if silver is worth 53 cents a gram, divide that by one million. And that's the value of silver in this thing <laughs> per coin. So you're talking, uh, I worked out the math once. Uh, let's see over here, huh, sticky. Roughly four one thousandth of a cent. That's what the plating of silver on this coin is worth. So definitely not. A silver investment there. These are strictly for novelty. I will admit they look pretty cool and you get a nice little, get my cursor going, they look pretty cool and you get a nice little presentation case with the uh, years and mint marks on them. 27 bucks. You know what? I, I think I would almost pull the trigger on this. It's not a bad deal other than my, my anger of replica copy but at the same time like this the, the said that this ad says these are very high dollar coins very rare coins I am never going to own one of these coins especially not in high grade condition like this so for just under 30 bucks I can have a reasonable facsimile of them just to show people and I don't know I, this is probably the best ad I've come across in uh, these magazines or this specific catalog. I, even with my abhorrent opinion of replicas and copies, in this case, I'm never going to own these. 99.99999% of coin collectors are never going to own these. They are such high dollar coins. A replica is probably the only way to go. And for six of them at 30 bucks, Five bucks a piece. All right, that's not a bad deal. I'll, I'll give it to them. I'll give them this one time. <laughs> this one time, I'll give it to them. This is an okay deal. But I would immediately mark these with a sticker or in permanent marker on the, on the back of the box or something, replicas, so no one else is fooled by it. Because even though it says copy right here on the back, it's in pretty small print, and it's in a place where... Someone's not necessarily going to look. So, that one gets a pass. I'll let that one pass. Let's take one more look at one more ad, and then we'll wrap up the uh, catalog part of this show. And on the next episode, we'll do shop at home television ads. Shop at home television ads. Where do we start? We're not going to. That'll be the next episode. All right, one more on this magazine catalog thing I found. Again, it's the Matthew Mint. I swear, I'm going to start a Jeffrey Mint. Why not? <laughs> okay. Ten Indian head pennies. <sighs> All right. Okay, first off, they're not pennies. The United States has never made a penny. England has made pennies. Australia, I believe, made pennies. We make cents. And it's one cent because it's one 
percent of a dollar, which is 100 cents. There you go. Cent history lesson over. So whenever I see the ad, it says pennies. They're not pennies. Penny is a person on the Big Bang Theory. So back to this inaccurate ad. Ten Indian head cents. Four, thirty-six dollars. Can you tell where I'm going with this one? Is this a good deal? Uh, no. <laughs> Let me prove it. Again, you're going to get good, low-grade examples of common dates. You're going to get an 1887 or newer, up to 1908. And they run about a dollar thirty to a dollar fifty a piece, just shy of two dollars. So really, eighteen eighty seven to nineteen oh eight, a buck thirty to two bucks a piece. And you're getting ten of them here for thirty six dollars. That's three dollars and sixty cents a piece. And you're going to get their choice of years and their choice of conditions, which is which is going to be low, good. So again, not a good deal. Sorry, Matthew. When the Jeffrey Mint fires up, I'm going to offer better deals. Better coins, better prices. So, sorry, Matt. Well, there we go. I'm trying to find my camera here. So that's the uh, end of this little episode here. Uh, tour through incredibly bad value coins on the internet and in catalogs <clears throat> and other places. This was the first episode in this little series that was from a mail order catalog that came to my house without me ever asking about it. I didn't ask for it. It just showed up. It was meant for the previous occupants of the house. So, uh, gosh, I hope they didn't order any coins from that magazine. So anyway, um, I came across that, looked through it, decided to let you guys know that you, you should never order from those kind of uh, catalog member magazines or the back of those newspaper ads and stuff. Just go to your local coin store. I guarantee you there's one within driving distance of where you're at right now. If not, um, check on the auction sites. I won't say the evil bay name. But you can uh, get in there and, and get good deals, especially if you're buying in bulk. And you actually get to see the coin you're bidding on or buying before you get it. Um, that's probably the second best way to get coins is uh, at least an, an online auction that has photographs of the coins you can take a look at. The best way is to find a local coin club or a, a coin shop and get to know the people who run it and get educated on coins and go there in person and pick something out and actually hold it before you buy it and research your coins before you buy them so you know what you should be paying for what condition and don't get ripped off by magazine and newspaper ads. So, thanks for watching. This is Jeff, live from the Man Cave. Uh, if you're curious, I have other shows about other things other than coins, comics being one, and vintage electronics, and really anything else that hits my fancy that I bring into the Man Cave here. And I record little segments of stuff, and actually over here, I have a show about audio cassettes and I found a whole bunch of old vintage and sometimes really bad audio cassettes so that's that's the a stack I've got over here on the other side of the desk for another show I'm working on so uh, for this little episode coins cassettes comics and coffee have all collided <laughs> or colluded <laughs> anyway thanks for watching uh, check out my other videos uh, like I said the Jeff Man Cave there's also some other shows in there that I help produce for other people so this, this is sort of a, a catch all promotion for the things on my channel so thanks for watching uh, check out Jeff's Man Cave there's some interesting stuff going on in that show too and I'll be back with the coin show for some more rip off type coin buying situations that you should avoid so Thanks for watching. Leave a comment if you would, please. Thanks. Catch you later.